What's up guys, you're watching Success Life, the show that seeks to educate, motivate and inspire. Our mission is to bring you closer to people that will help you to reach your goals. He graduated from the University of the West Indies with a bachelor's degree in actuarial science. He is a financial analyst. He's none other than Joel Jackson. Joel, Nick, good to see you, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming today. Of course. All right, so let's get into the interview, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the background. Well, I, I grew up here in Kingston, Jamaica, of course. Um, Fun-loving child, love, <laughs> Love the outdoors to some some degree, but also spent a lot of time inside fiddling fiddling around with engineering stuff, just trying to figure out how things work. Um, majority of my schooling was at Kingsway Kindergarten Prep and then high school, where I got a solid Christian upbringing, solid Christian um, background. My family is Seventh Day Adventist. I grew up in the church, but from there. Transition on went into university where I studied actuarial science. And uh, yeah, so my life has pretty much centered around mathematics, but really and truly my heart is in engineering. My heart is in design, but so why did you choose actuary? You know, it's actually a funny, kind of funny story. And uh, Looking back on it, I can really say that this is where Providence wanted me to go mm -hmm. because I had applied to another university here in Jamaica mm -hmm. uh, to do engineering and they rejected me because I didn't have chemistry at the A-levels. Mm -hmm. um, there was an the option of going overseas to Trinidad to study mm -hmm. engineering as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I was kind of you know, afraid of leaving home and then going into a new environment all by myself. Um, but I learned about actuarial science, yeah. very math based. I have the mind for math, so I said, All right, sure, I'll go into it. And that decision I made pretty much going into upper six. Um, I did six form at all months. Uh, so it was like a last minute decision, but it's one that I don't regret because although currently in my field I'm not an actuary, mm -hmm. the training and the experience that I got doing the degree. It's really prepared me for where I am now. Okay, so did you face any struggles? Um, struggles. Don't think about that. Did I face much struggles? Not really. The program itself was difficult. The program itself was difficult, but nothing that I would say was a hindrance to me um, being where I am right now. But the one of the major struggles that I had. Um, it was actually coming out of the coming out of school. Um, I graduated very close to the top of my class, and that's significant for the type of degree because going into the program, um, my batchmates and myself, we, we learned that the actuarial science degree is one of the harder harder degrees at the University of the West Indies. It had a very high dropout rate and so forth, and and I graduated with a. Uh, high GPA was nominated to be the valedictorian for for the faculty. Um, didn't accept it for religious reasons based on when the graduation would be. Mm -hmm. um, but having all of that and notwithstanding that, when I left school I was unemployed for a number of months. Yeah. So I had applied all over the place and I was just still at home. Mm -hmm. While well, you know my other batchmates graduated with me. They were here, so I already transitioned to other places of work and so forth. So, you know, the struggle was really internal to say, you know, this is what happened to me. Yeah. That, you know, I graduated with this and that and that, but yet I can't land a simple job. But, um, yeah, so that was really the hardest part of my school experience. How did you manage to overcome the struggles and come on to study mm -hmm. and um, be unemployed for a period of time, a long period of time? How did, how did you, what did you do to overcome? Well, when it came to those studies, I really had to, really had to apply myself to, to the work. 
Um, I'm, I'm a person that if if I have something to do, I prefer to do it as early as possible rather than bring it right down to the to the wire, straight onto the deadline. No, yeah. I, I like getting the work out of the way and then play after, if you get me. So that, that was me in school. I was constantly in the book because the work constantly came at us. And um, it was hard, it was difficult, but still at the same time, I ensure that I tried to live a balanced life as far as possible. So I still had my social life. Still went up with my friends, still had my friend circle at school, that different types of friends, friendship circles with different individuals. So still was able to maintain that. But the part with the unemployment, that was difficult because like I said, a number of my peers, they were employed. Either they were working or they were going on to do further studies. Yeah. So it was an experience that pretty much humbled me to make me realize that say, hey, although yeah, you, you graduated with this and that and you did so well in school, your adult life and growing up life is a different kind of thing. Yeah. So I needed to start down here and then slowly get to the up because if I go in with this pride and almost thinking that I deserve to be here, yeah. I would probably be a different individual today. So it, it, it was a learning experience and God had to bring me through that in order to get me at a point where he could then elevate me afterwards. So that's all I got to it. Okay. All right, for someone that wants to go into the same career field as you, mm -hmm. what advice do you have to give? Work hard. Mm -hmm. Work hard, but at the same time, whatever you're given to do, mm -hmm. do it to the best of your ability. Yeah. Because when I started out, so the first job that I had was actually as a bank teller. Yeah. And uh, I remember getting the, 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 the job letter that detailed the salary and everything like that. And I looked at it, I was like, okay, wow. It was sort of disappointing, mm -hmm. but you know, it was a, uh, well, it's better than what I'm getting right now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I went in and uh, two weeks on the job, I wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. I started complaining to myself, just started, just started not doing my best and just, my mind was just away from the job. So I'm there, you know, my body is there, counting on money and whatever it might be, but my head wasn't in it. I was just focused on getting out. Yeah. And I stayed in that job for a year and nine months. Mm -hmm. Mind after two weeks, I wanted to go, you know, yeah. but I stayed there a year and nine months. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn through it all that no matter what you're given to do, no matter how small it is, no matter how insignificant it may seem to the, to the wider strategic plan of the organization, you do it to the best of your ability. And it's when that realization came to me and I started applying myself to the job that my supervisors noticed, that management noticed, and they realized that, say, hey, start moving from here to there. Because that same organization, they chose me to go and fill in in another room, in another parish, at another branch. So, you know, it was hotel and everything like that and so forth, although I'm going for work. Yeah. And that experience and that training that I got, I call it training, I carried it with me to my current place of employment at Manco, Jamaica, where once again, started out small, yeah. but I applied myself at that and uh, slowly started to move up the ranks. And I've been at Bank of Jamaica. This this November is going to make eight years. Yeah, it's going to make eight years. And in eight years, I moved from an entry level to now being an acting assistant director over my department, a department of four, four juniors below me. And that's significant for me. Eight years to move up the ranks such as that. And all along the way, one of the main principles, there are several of them, but one of the main principles that I apply when it comes to work ethics is whatever you're given to do, you'll be your best at it. Don't watch nobody else, just do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Alright, makes a lot of sense. Um, Alright, so the name of this show is called Success Night, mm -hmm. right? And uh, success to me is, in my definition, it is the progressive realization of a worthy idea. Right? So it's not just 
when you reach the end goal. Yeah. It's the mo from the moment you start thinking about doing something mm -hmm. to the moment where you make the first step, that's success. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is what's your def definition for success? I like your definition. <clears throat> and permit me to take a definition and to add to it. Yeah. Um, I'll add to it by saying from from you conceptualize what it is that you want to achieve yeah. and you start making the first steps to move yeah. towards it. Mm -hmm. But as you move along the way, always bear in mind that you're going to be interacting with people as well. Mm -hmm. You're going to be making connections, whether they are to benefit you in moving towards your goal mm -hmm. or they're just persons along the way. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, whatever the, the circumstance under which you're interacting with people, if it is that you do move on from them, the legacy that you would have left behind them, would have left behind you as you moved on, yeah. should leave an impression on them and it should be a positive impression. For me, in, in my view, you're not successful if people have a bad taste in their mouth when they hear your name. You get me? You're not successful if you're not leaving something positive in somebody's life, if you're not impacting them. If you are not imparting to them what you yourself have learned and experienced. And I'm just going to insert this. When I saw your videos and so forth about Success Diet and your, your page, I said, this is really commendable because you're taking your experiences and your knowledge and you're sharing it with others. That's a part of success because at the end of the day, sadly, if, if the Lord um, allows it, we are going to pass away. Yeah. And all our knowledge, all our experiences, they will go with us unless it is that we deposit them yeah. in others as well so that we cannot replicate ourselves because I don't want another replica of me. No. I want whoever else I impact to be the best of themselves so that they too can add whatever they can add or they're supposed to add to the world. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. What's up guys? I'm Joel Jackson and you are watching Success Diet. I think you are a very successful individual, mm -hmm. right? And with success comes a lot of failure, mm -hmm. right? So how do you deal with your failures? Mm -hmm. Dealing with failures, um, the only way I believe that we should deal with them, and this is how I deal with them, is you learn from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm still in a learning process still learning that I'm not going to get everything perfect the first time and because of that, I'm going to kind of make myself vulnerable here because of that there are many things I don't attempt because I don't believe I'm going to get it perfect the first time that I do it but that, that has kind of been decreasing over the years because I'm learning that when you go into a new thing when you're doing a new assignment, when you're doing a new task when you're going out in a new venture uh, chances are you're not going to get it right. You're going to come across some things that either you never planned for or you never planned enough for it. And it's going to end in some degree of failure. So after going through that grieving period, because it's all right to feel sad, you know, boy, you get a wound that hurts. hurt. Yeah. After going through that, you brush yourself off and you make notes what went wrong. You make notes of um, what should be done to mitigate against that yes. and then you just go again right you know oftentimes failure brings fear yeah so this leads me to my my next question mm -hmm. what is your greatest fear failing my <laughs> right. greatest fear is failing but not just failing in the general sense of the word you know failing at every and anything because i know that there are some things like i said some things that i won't get perfect the first time mm -hmm. um or the second time or third or whatever that might be but it is failing at the things that matter in life and for me my christian work my relationship with god that is paramount and i try to keep it paramount of course there are failures along the way but my greatest fear is ultimately failing at that, not really knowing God for who he is and appreciating him for all that he has done in my life personally. Um, but then there's also failing at being a good husband to my wife, being a good father to my son, and being a blessing to the lives of those around me. So, to sum it all up, my greatest fear 
is becoming so concerned about me that I'm not realizing how I'm affecting everybody else, both those around me and those above me. Alright, so coming from your socioeconomic background, right? What advice, based on your experience and the things you've been through mm -hmm. in your career field, yeah. what advice do you have for just about anyone who is coming up and wants to be a success? Um, so my socioeconomic upbringing, I, I, I didn't have the privilege of growing up rich. I didn't have the privilege of getting everything, you know, given to me and fed to me as I asked for it. If, if I can share, I remember one experience and it's something that has really shaped me in life. I remember um, one Christmas, you know, back in the day, I think they still do it now, when it's Christmas Eve, we will go uptown and walk and so on. I remember when I was much younger, um, I went out with my parents and my siblings and I always wanted a Game Boy Color. And we went into What's New and told my parents about the Game Boy Color, really excited about it and, and they bought it for me. But poor us didn't know that um, you needed to buy a cartridge as well to go with it. Yes. Now at that time, cartridge was killer expensive yes. because Game Boy Color just come out and everything. And when we found out the cost and so forth, never had the money to buy it. So really never made sense to keep the Game Boy and don't have anything to play it. So I returned it and they explained it to me and so forth. I don't remember how old I was, I was probably about seven or eight, eight years old, eight or nine. And I said, no, I understand. I don't understand. Um, and it, it, it has shaped me throughout the years that to get what you want in life, it takes time. And I've grown up with that mentality that you set your eyes on something that you want. And looking at, let's say it's purchasing something, you look at your income now, don't kill off yourself to try to get it. There will be time. Just take your time and save up and eventually you'll make enough to go out and get what it is that you want. So similarly, life, life, life is not easy. Life is going to be difficult. Whether you're rich or you're poor, there's some difficulties in life. So no matter your economic upbringing, everybody can get to that point. It's just that some will take longer than others, but it just takes patience and it takes perseverance to get there. Right. Okay. So if you were to change anything about your past, mm -hmm. what would it be? Well, <laughs> if I was to change anything about my past, it would be that I would do what it is that I'm passionate about. No matter what. Um, I think one of the one of this sad realities of parenting, especially during my generation, is that whatever career you choose, it should it should be the career that brings the money. It should be the career that puts you in a better financial position. Yeah, there, there was much emphasis on doing what it is that you love. Um, I love drawing. Yeah. I, I love designing, especially cars. Um, I love engineering. Mm -hmm. But apart from the I call them mishaps that kind of directed me in another direction. Um, there, there wasn't that great encouragement to say, you know, yeah, go and pursue that. It was more seen as a hobby. And uh, I, I, I took note of it. I took note of how it shaped me, the direction I went in life. I, I don't regret it. But if I could redo life, I would do what it is that I was passionate about. Um, I see others in the area. Not just that, but they're doing what they love, and these persons they will work for always oh, love complaints or support you yourself, you know. Yeah. <laughs> as much as it's stressful and so on, but you're doing what you love, so there's that zeal, there's that drive to keep going at it, and it's 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 something that I am doing with my son as he's growing up, finding out what it is that he loves, where his interest is and just trying to hone him and shape him in that direction. So when he gets up to the age of choosing his career, he can really go after what he loves. Okay, Joe, so last question. Who would you challenge to be on this show? <laughs> That's an easy one. I would challenge my friend Kevin Brown. 
He is a graphic graphic designer. Um, he is excellent at what he does, and I really admire for how he has gone forward with his passion. It's completely separate from what he studied at university. Yeah. Like polar opposites, mm -hmm. but he's gone in the direction of doing what he loves, and it would be a benefit to to the world for him to share what he has done through in his experiences and what he can he can give in his advice and counsel. So Kevin, you have been challenged. <laughs> All right, so thanks again, Joe. Yeah, man, no problem. Hey guys, thanks for watching another amazing episode of Success Diet. I just want to encourage you to never let a day go by without making a step towards achieving your goals. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and share this channel with your friends.